for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch and today we are going to talk about the crisis in the IT sector in India. India's IT sector is worth billions of dollars and is a major source of employment for hundreds and thousands of people. But it has been facing a crisis in recent times. And to talk more about this, we are joined by Kiran Chanda, President of the Forum of IT Professionals. Hello Kiran, thank you for joining us. So uh, first of all, there have been a lot of media reports in recent times about what are called layoffs in the IT sector. So for instance, the IT major Cognizant announced nearly 5,000 to 7,000 layoffs. There was Infosys which also announced an equal number of uh, layoffs. And this is not a new thing. In the past couple of years also, we've seen reports of what the media calls mass layoffs. So could you talk a bit about what exactly is happening in the sector? So there's a problematic perceptional thing when the companies and the media say that it's a layoff. Layoff legally in the Indian conditions has got a very specific meaning which is attributed to the seasonal industry or industries which are of seasonal nature. So when the company is locked out or the production process has been locked out for the lack of resources, maybe for example the case of a sugarcane industry or any of those industries of the agri products, the company shut down for a brief period and then they are back into production. That period is called as a layoff legally. So in a layoff situation, it is mandatory, the law says that when an employee is laid off, when the company is back in the production, the senior most employee who has been sent home would be given the first preferential treatment in recruiting back. Mm. So that's precisely the reason when they use the word layoff. Okay. It means it comes with a backing up of a condition that any senior employee who has been sent home would be given the first uh, preferential treatment in recruiting, in the recruitment. But here what is happening in the IT industry is mass retrenchments mm. which are illegal. Right. So it is illegal retrenchments that are happening in the IT industry and you can't term them as layoffs, mm -hmm. firstly. And the reason there is a huge number of numbers are in huge number when people are being sent home. And essentially they have nothing to do with any of the arguments which the companies are giving. They, they are retrenching them illegally and the numbers are pretty high. What essentially is happening in the Indian context is wage restructuring in the industry. The same role which is being retrenched, the companies are giving out in open and open advertisements in other various recruitment domains or platforms like Monster or Naukri. The same role is being filled up again with lesser wages. So what essentially hap is happening in the IT industry, they are restructuring the wages employees are being fired indiscriminately and people are being hired for low wages. Right. So this is a process that has been happening in the, uh, it is a violation of the Indian law and uh, people are organizing themselves and fighting it back. Right. So uh, one of the, uh, some of the arguments given by the companies is that one, there is a lot of automation going on and which is the reason for them having to cut their workforce. Then there's the argument that many of these people, many of these people are, their roles are redundant or many of them don't have the necessary skills considering the kind of shift in emphasis by many of these companies. So do these arguments actually make any sense or is it just an excuse? So, um, you have asked multiple questions in this. Let us take the first one, first point that you uh, termed it as automation mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence. Right. Uh, radically changing the nature of IT. Yes, it is true that artificial intelligence will change the nature in which IT is being there or the automation of IT itself. Mm -hmm. But we are nowhere near to that. Okay. So IT industry is automating itself. It is true. It has been happening for a period. And now all the jobs that are being uh, closed are not as a consequence of the automation of the IT industry in itself per se. It is a process that is going to happen in the future. But have we matured to that level as of today? No. Right. Because when you look at the recruitment patterns in the IT industry, the headcount of the IT industry has not gone down significantly. If IT industry were to be assumed that as a consequence of automation, the jobs are going, it would be a, a, net, redund a net reduction in the total number Workforce. of employees in the yes. company also, which is not true. And if you look at the recruitment patterns and the skill set for which recruitments are happening, the large scale of them are, as I have already pointed out, it is restructuring of the wages because we have a huge amount of 
reserved army of workable professionals, uh, close to uh, twice the number of the people who have been uh, absorbed into the industry are outside waiting for jobs. So, thus gives a favorable condition for the IT corporations to violate the laws and the government is not responding to it. That is the first part of it. And when you look at the second aspect of it, when you consider role redundancy or these are a certain baggages which the companies on the one hand are sending away professionals brutally out and attaching them or tagging them with a lot of baggage, making their lives miserable and giving them or making their options of getting a job even more vulnerable. They are being pushed into a very vulnerable situation. What does this role redundancy mean? When the projects or ongoing projects are going on, companies persuade IT professionals not to change their domain precisely because the area of work when you say domain you mean the yeah, technology domain, in technology which working, yeah. technology and also domain right. if i were to work in a telecom domain on a particular technology they would not want me to move from it let us take the classical example of mainframes with the advent of cloud the entire mainframe infrastructure is moving out but a professional has been forced by the corporations ibm which is in firing it professionals in a big way now in india when they were firing IT professionals, IBM mainframes, they have been persuading people not to move out of mainframes because they would be the highly billable resources. Right. Because billing of resources happens based on the seniority. Oh. seniority. So, 15 to 20 percent of the professionals were persuaded by the corporations not to move from the discipline that they have been working on to maximize their profits then. And now, there is something called as industrial establishment standing orders in India where you will have to notify saying that what are the total number of roles that a corporation is creating and for what purposes are you taking them in. So, if there is a change of nature of employment, it is the responsibility of the corporation or the company to train the IT professionals to upgrade their skills and then move on. So, I am speaking about a very narrow percentile of 15 to 20 percent of the IT professionals who have, were stuck with a particular trade or a particular discipline just because of the compulsion from the corporations themselves. And when you look at the rest of the 85 percent of the IT professionals, if you look at the resumes of the IT professionals in the IT industry, everyone has gone through over a change of five different variants of technologies. Uh -huh. And the people who are being fired, look at the age. Anyone who is about 10 years of experience is becoming vulnerable and they are firing them. If you look at any IT professional who has worked for 10 years in an IT industry, with the majority of them, close to 85 percent, they would have transformed themselves with five, five to six different variants of technologies. It means they have been upgrading themselves. Right. If you look at the budgets and the spending and the expenditures of all these corporations, Nowhere there would be an expenditure of upgrading their IT pro their employees' work base or training the work boy employees' work base into a new sector or new new technology. So all this the IT professionals have done it from their pockets. They have paid themselves through the non-formal education mechanism that exists in India or in all the metros. So IT professionals have upgraded their skills and despite which they have been tagged and then sent out. Right. This is a serious cause of concern. Oh. On the one hand, they are violating law. Second hand, they are making their lives of these IT professionals miserable and vulnerable to an extent that when they are firing an IT professional, the insurance that is being provided, employees insurance that has been provided particularly in the lines of health and health insurance has been cut off. It means he is going to be just vulnerable. Just look at any of the new generation industries, they just wash their hands off from taking up any of the welfare measures which otherwise are elementary to be provided. You look at all the IT majors, Pune, Mumbai, Delhi or I could say Gurgaon, Noida, Hyderabad, Bangalore or Chennai, any of these places, in no place you have one school, one hospital or one college set up by these IT giants cooperatively put together or collaboratively put together in the interest of IT professionals. Right. But if you look at the port industry, they had their own school. Uh -huh. So, on the one hand, they have washing of their hand from all social responsibilities, brutally violating law, adding 
uh, tags and baggages to the IT professionals right. and also making their vulnerable from even the elementary healthcare system, mm -hmm. the insurance which the IT professional pays from his pocket. We need to understand that these corporations don't even pay a single paise. It is the IT professional who pays it as a group insurance. Even that they are truncating off, making it more vulnerable right. and miserable. And this is made worse by the fact that the industry, the culture of the industry itself has involved treating employees as individuals. The performance appraisals, the discussions with the HR for instance. And they do not, there's active discouragement of any attempted unionization or any attempted organization. I think, yeah, well, there is, we have to look at how the IT industry is organized. The new generation industries have been organized. So they have ensured that the work is fragmented such that each employee is pitched against his co-employee. Right. A developer's team is pitched against, and, uh, pitched against a testing team. And the developers themselves, the on-site developer and the developer at the main office are against, pitched against one another. Right. So it created, it was built on a structural arrangement where the necessary conditions for people to get, have a homogeneous culture at the floor level is basically balkanized. Oh. When they sit with each other also, they are just broken down and divided. There are huge walls uh -huh. that are built between the IT professionals, barring them from right. having any kind of a spiritual environment right. or cultural exchange uh -huh. to happen. That's one part of it. But however, breaking all those stuffs, all this, they have built it at a point when there was the IT industry was in a booming situation. When the IT industry was in a booming situation, when people were not happy with the promotion systems or the increments, they just quit and moved outside. So attrition was considered by the same IT industry as a strong point of, strong point. When they said strong point, they were building strong philosophical roots so that people don't organize themselves into. But now the situation has changed. There is a sense of realization among the IT professionals and also the IT and ITES sector. And they have started organizing themselves. Right. And uh, barring all these issues, there have been a lot of struggles, fights that are happening. And there are significant amount of successes right. where IT professionals are gaining in this. And one of the other key points also is that, which again is used by companies to sort of justify uh, or against labor action in labor courts, is that many of these employees are managers because they, they have the designation such as team leader and other designations. So a huge percentage of the IT employees are supposedly managers. So, so the, even when you look at, I was uh, just mentioning about the structured uh, structure of the IT industry. There are a lot of judgments that are in place, Supreme Court judgments, directives, which and also the law explicitly states that it is the content of work that matters, but not the designation that they attribute right. to. I think there would be any industry apart from the new generation industries where every individual is considered to be supervising more number of people or he is in a managerial role. Close to 30% of them would be team leads, team managers or someone who is above someone else. There are people who are individuals who are still considered to be with the designation of a manager. Uh -huh. So this is the argument that giving individuals with the names, this has been the tactics of the industry persuading them not to organize themselves to an extent that when people join the IT industry, there are induction sessions or you could say inception or induction sessions when HR comes in particular and says that if your association with any of these organizations might lead you to be getting out of the industry. Right. So there is a force. Uh, people have been deprived of the rights and the norms in which they want IT people to, IT professionals to think, the companies have been persuading them since the inception level. And this entire thing, even if you look at a manager by definition according to the law, uh, the law, the labor laws of this country, manager is a person who, rep who can represent the company on its behalf to the larger public. If you look at it, I don't think there are many number of people in the IT industry, even if an IT industry which has some 60,000, 70,000 professionals, hardly 10, 15 people would be able to come out and represent. Right. Anyone below the level of the business unit head is eligible to be considered to be a workman oh. and they can organize themselves and we have had significant successes right. in this aspect. So the structure of it is an important thing which make made the IT professionals 
live in a make believe world considering themselves to be managers right. which myth is being now broken right. and could you talk a bit about the resistance that is currently on like you said over the past few years uh, organizations have been mobilizing in this sector uh, the employees have been being are increasingly dissatisfied and they are understanding the importance of organizing so could you talk a bit about the experiences and what are the same methods through which this kind of resistance works i think today marks the anniversary of a very uh, second anniversary of a very brutal incident mm -hmm. i would just want to bring it to your notice that when firing people in a multinational corporation called verizon bouncers paramedics mm -hmm. psychiatrists mm -hmm. hr managers was a team that was engaged in firing close to a thousand IT professionals across the country. Right. So this, uh, you see, the way in which they fire people, there was a, it was a very brutal way in which they engaged, and people have started resisting. Mm -hmm. And there are close to sixty-seven members who have filed a court case petition uh, in the High Court of Telangana. And apart from that, there have been arguments in the Labour Commissioner's Office as a consequence of the. Pressure from IT professionals in Bangalore, Tamil Nadu, uh, Telangana, and other regions, particularly Telangana region, where there were close to 2,500 petitions mm -hmm. on the IT professionals, the Labour Department was forced to come out and say that labour laws are applicable, and also there is a recent GO that speaks about paying overtime. to the it professionals if they work extra right so this though it is being implemented or not this i would say at a regressive period when the governments are moving away or shying away uh -huh. my labor department coming out and giving out such a statement has been as a consequence of the struggle or the battles that the it professionals right. are waging it up right and people there is still an apprehension among the it professionals that what would happen if it professionals come out and protest i said you there are close to 2500 cases all of them have been moved back into the industry right and people who have been fighting cases in the high courts are also back in the industry mm -hmm. so it, now people started realizing that right to association right to organization is their fundamental right mm -hmm. and that is why and the, there is a sense of realization among the it professionals also right and the resistances range from uh, 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 dealing the cases at the labor department to making protests street level protests and uh, multiple levels of activism which people are coming out in a very big right. way and finally what has been the response to the state and national governments on this issue have they taken it uh, taken it up seriously at all because the numbers you're talking about are in the tens of thousands and this happens almost every 2 years so has there been any policy level intervention by any of the governments you see the governments i would rather say that they have been irresponsible particularly the central government central government the it minister himself has come out and said that the labor commissioners need to behave well right. what does he expect the labor commissioner to do he is bound by the statute and he have to implement the statutes when the people are coming for justice by behave well he means behave in a pro corporate exactly, manner right? exactly when right. he says behave your behave well he was speaking them to not to be over sensitive and respond to the it professionals demands right and the labor commissioner's uh, office is bound by the law mm -hmm. and uh, the central government is unhappy and they have been making many re derogatory remarks against the it professionals also right. to an extent that then ias officers the principal secretaries of it departments are coming out and saying that certain non performers have been removed so our principal demand has been when an ias officer at the level of the principal secretary bureaucrats uh, basically principal sec or bureaucracy right. Right. top level bureaucracy in the state mm -hmm. who is supposed to take care of this labor laws implementation of them comes out and says that people are being removed or non performers right it means he does not understand the law of the land and hence for they should be sacked mm -hmm. because they are there to protect the statutes and when they violate there is it is insubordination the right. government of india and the state governments should consider them as suomo to insubordination and take take action on them mm -hmm. on the contrary i would basically want to bring to the your notice and also to the audience that the labor laws that have been as a consequence of the indian freedom struggle have given a lot of sections which are favorable to the working people right. based on which we have been having significant amount of successes whereas i would say that where companies have come forward to fire 300 people in hyderabad they have gone back 
in certain companies which were absolutely stubborn took back the employees. Right. Certain companies have come forward and paid compensation. So the rate of success has been differential, but there have been significant successes as a consequence of the existing labor laws, which I feel that they are weak, right. not completely in the interest of the working people. But now, the labor amendment bills that are coming out oh. in the parliament, that have been tabled in the parliament, are just going to be disastrous. Right. They are just in the definitions itself, they have removed a lot of people, a lot of grades in the definitions itself, which bars all the IT professionals or significant number of the working professionals uh, away from the right. ambit of the applicability of the labor law. And I think that is a serious cause of concern. Uh -huh. And the central government's action is very nasty and against the interest of any working professional, not just IT industry, right. be it pharma industry or be it any of the new generation industries along with the conventional industries. And this is going to be very hazardous. Among the state governments, there is a difference. I would say there is Tamil Nadu relatively progressive, Kerala very progressive, Telangana, they would say via media, they are in between. So there is a difference in the way in which the state governments are responding. But the central government is absolutely in a way that it is going to hit hard on any of the working people. Right. Thank you so much, Kiran. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,